realize just how bad it's gotten in California? According to Sharon Parsavand of the Press Enterprise, she reports that 27,000 teachers will receive preliminary layoff notices by the end of this year, 48 state parks will be closed, and 22,000 prisoners will be released and dumped back onto our streets. There are many these are issues that directly affect you. Personally, I hate gambling, but I do love casinos. Here in the desert, we can see firsthand the multiple entertainment benefits of casinos other than gambling, such as rock yard, restaurants, um, the clubs, we have concerts like Fergie, and bowling. The California legislature should legalize privately owned casinos. First, I will talk about the need for more revenue. Second, the reasons why they are legal. Third, gambling's effect on communities. And lastly, how casinos can be a real option to fix the California budget. First, let's look deeper into California's need for more revenue. The California budget is imperative to look at <coughs> untapped resources that haven't been looked at before. Lori Levi, in her March 2009 news release for the, um, the Employment of California, reports that um, unemployment has reached 10.5% in Amendadona County. It's reached 41%. That is an all-time high. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger recently signed into law five bills that will allow California to receive $17.5 billion in federal economic stimulus aid. However, my Matthew Yee in his San Francisco Chronicles article reports that this won't be enough for Cal to keep California from a $3 billion tax raise and a 10% cut across all state services, including the already struggling um, California education system. Next, let's look into why California does not allow privately owned casinos. Uh, California's strict law prohibits any casinos on non-tribal land. Uh, it falls under one of the numerous uh, morality principles under the police powers of the 10th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. California views jackpots as a private lottery and therefore makes them illegal. Further, the infringement on rights goes into reservation casinos with the California Gambling Control Act, which says that anyone under the age of 21 cannot enter a casino floor and spend money. Personally, I feel that these regulations are a restriction on how we spend money in a free market. Remember that this is the money that you've already paid out after you've paid your state and federal taxes, your social security taxes, Medicare, property taxes, not to mention that you're taxed on nearly every dollar that you spend. The state's goal, according to William Goldstein, and David Wasserman, quoted in Guy Keller's 2002 paper, The Government, is a strategy of containment to minimize the moral risk of gambling on society as a whole and individuals. However, according to Harvard Medical, or the Harvard Medical School Division on Addiction, only 1% of the entire American population can be considered pathological gamblers. That means California is missing out on massive revenues and infringing on our rights to protect 1% of the population. Next, California is missing out on billions of dollars of revenue. Um, Frank Fomfort, in his 2007 speech, Gambling Benefits Commun Communities, reports that 445 casinos across 11 states generated $29 billion in revenue and paid $47 million, or $4.7 billion in taxes towards local governments. They also created 350,000 jobs and paid these workers $12 billion, including um, health care. According to a study by industry employees, 8.5% of casino workers left welfare as a, as a result of their employment, 16% left some sort of public assistance, and 63% said that they had better access to medical care as a result of their employment. Further, in 1996, a federal commission mandated by Congress concluded on a two-year study finished in 1999 that communities closest to casinos had a drop in welfare payments, a drop in unemployment rates, and a drop in unemployment insurance payments. Research also found no link between casinos in the community and bankruptcy or casinos in the community and crime. The U.S. Treasury Department concluded a similar um, conclusion after they had their own one-year study on the same um, 
bankruptcy and gambling. Now, let's see, now that we see the true effects that gambling has on communities, let's revisit our solution. Legalizing privately owned casinos um, in, the state of, in the state of California. Allowing casinos like those in Nevada would fix our economy without having to raise any of our taxes. Uh, the Gaming Control Board of Nevada, on their website last updated February two, 2009, reported that Nevada collected $1 billion per month just from casinos, that the casinos paid out $46 million per month to the state of Nevada, and that these this income allows we're all workers to pay absolutely no state income tax and keeps their sales tax low. In conclusion, imagine the profits that California could have, um, could see by legalizing casinos. Little else you can do in Nevada, so why would you drive all the way out to the middle of the desert when you can visit California's Vegas and see Hollywood, Orange County, San Francisco, or wine country? There is no reason California shouldn't legalize casinos, and as citizens, we can write our legislator to ask for this to be a solution to our, our economy. So next time you're upset about paying your taxes or the economy, think of casinos as one option to raise money. Thank you. Do you need a PowerPoint? Do you need a PowerPoint? Thank you.